Okay. So if you can confirm that it's working, uh, can you see it? Okay, perfect. So like uh, Constantina was saying, um, this is a project which is called Climate Heritage Game. Our main aim is to train educators, but also students uh, to learn what's the impact of climate change in cultural uh, heritage, for example, in local sites uh, or local areas, etc. cetera. So probably, uh, Constantina, I see that you are back again, maybe. Yes, yes. Later, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry, everyone. I don't know when, uh, why this is happening or, uh, always with the webinars and with the internet uh, connection to the issues, but uh, should I continue, Sheila? Mm, whatever you prefer. Okay, okay, I'm continuing. I'm going, I'm going to be quick. Okay, I'm sorry again, everyone, for this. So, as I was saying, um, this is our partnership. We have six different organizations from six different countries, three of which are schools. We have Politecnica y Castella Soriere from Spain. We have Agrupamento de Escolas Alcanena from Portugal. We have Prof. Ivan Apostolo from uh, Bulgaria. And then we're continuing with Predict Consulting from uh, Romania, IT from Greece, and ECC from France. So, uh, the project uh, started in 2021 uh, when the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic were really like um, shown into the world and uh, they had already reshaped the traditional education system and how the learning and teaching methods were usually being. So we just did a research to define the needs of this um, of the situation and create something that would make a change. So. The definition of the needs are, according to the 2019 Education and Training Monitor of the European Commission across Europe, teachers reported a high need for training on ICT skills for teaching. Both ICT for teaching and uh, teaching uh, in multicultural or multilingual settings rank high in the list of teachers' training needs. 40% of teachers in the European report that uh, they had a sense of preparedness in the use of ICT for teaching in 2018, a statement that was expressed even before the pandemic crisis and the obligatory online teaching and distance learning of 2019 and 2020. So let's now focus on our target groups. We have two target groups. One is the teachers and educators of secondary schools, and the other one is the set of students of secondary schools from 13 to 18 years old. So it's about time I answer the question, what is the Climate Heritage Game? The Climate Heritage Game is a project which aims to satisfy the, pre the very present need that was created by the COVID-19 pandemic for the development uh, of teachers' digital skills and specifically educational game development skills and to provide them with an engaging and immersive training tool to support online training. In parallel, the project aims to creating, uh, at creating awareness and engagement of students aged uh, 13 uh, to 18 years old with the European priorities of cultural heritage preservation and climate change preservation by employing their favorite uh, pastime, which is gaming, as a training method. For both the target groups, the ultimate project goal is to make them more resilient and to prepare them for the new developing digital world. So, since I mentioned game, why do we believe that gamification is important in the teaching and learning process? And why do we believe that, what is the added value that it brings? So the gamification is about applying gaming strategies to improve learning and to make it more engaging for individuals. Gamification for learning can be beneficial because games, inst games instill lifelong skills, which can be presented here. And some of them are problem solving, critical thinking, social awareness, cooperation, and collaboration. Why now uh, the Clement Heritage Game uh, is innovative? It is innovative because it combines three elements that have not been combined before. First, it combines the creation of the digital skills for educational game development with the stimulation of awareness and environmental actions regarding climate change and specific activities for subject knowledge. And last but not least, with the sensitization about local cultural heritage. 
we're going to move on with uh, the outputs of the project, what we're going to produce and share with all of you. We have the training course uh, which, uh, for which Sailor is going to take the lead later on, on how to develop a digital game for educational purposes. The aim of the training course is to provide guidance on how to develop a game for educational purposes that can be used in the context of this project, as well as by any other teacher or trainer who wishes to enrich the teaching toolbox for a more engaging, captivating, and fun way to transfer knowledge to their students. Now we're moving on with the second output of the project, which is the Climate Heritage Game itself. This game aims to create awareness in students and teachers about important environmental issues by actually examining, studying, and creating informative content about cultural sites and the impact of climate change to them in their own towns or cities. So the game will remain as a valuable tool and open educational source for all European teachers to use it in their classrooms and teaching curricula to upload their own materials such as videos, photographs, information and questions about their local cultural heritage and the effects of climate change in their own areas. Now, not to waste more time of, uh, more time of yours, uh, we have the Facebook page, which is the Climate Heritage Game. If you tag it, you can find it out in uh, Facebook. And then we have our website, which every information is going to be there, also the webinar, everything. So if you want, you can type it, but you can, of course, scan the QR code that you can see right in your uh, screens with your phone. So I'm going to give you just a few seconds to do so, if you wish. And that was pretty much it from my side. And I really want to thank you for your time. I really hope you had like a general idea about our project and our aims. And then we're going to move on with more specific things about the project. So let me stop sharing my screen. And we can move on, of course, with Sela. So Sela, please. Thank you, Constantina. Thank Hello you. again. My name is Sela. I work for Politecnica Chorieri. We are a school located in the Basque Country, which is in the north of Spain. We provide vocational training and also high school. And we are part of this uh, Erasmus Plus project, like I mentioned before. So what I'm going to do now is present what we've done uh, with regards to the training course, which is a training course for teachers on how to get to develop a digital game for educational purposes. So now I'm going to share my screen again. And Okay, so this is one of the um, main materials we have developed um, as a team, which is called, like I mentioned, the training course on how to develop digital games for educational purposes. So very briefly, I'm going to present the contents of this training. Uh, so first, I'm going to talk a little bit about the training course and the overall content. And um, I will very briefly also mention uh, what modules we, we are covering and their contents. So about the training course. This training course is, um, first of all, a complete and ready to use set of self-learning modules, that is that you can learn on your own path and also self-assess the knowledge you received in uh, the taking of this course and these modules. Uh, all of them on how to develop a digital game. So this training course um, has its main focus on the development of games for the protection and understanding of cultural heritage, which has been damaged by the impact of climate change throughout the years. Also, this is important for teachers, basically for upskilling their digital capabilities, because they can be able to understand the mechanics behind gaming and how to create their own games for educational assignments. That is that we are proposing a complete game on this topic, but teachers who take this course might be able to create their own for different, um, I don't know, course modules or topics because they will have the basics of game creation. So this training course consists of five modules 
with the learning outcomes and competences with, like I mentioned before, self-assessment questions like tests, cahoots, and other kinds of um, own learning um, methodologies and platforms, and also practical examples, because there will be a whole module dedicated to a case study of a game, which is the Climate Heritage Game. So more in detail, the modules that we are covering is gamification in education, the learning library platform, the structure of the learning game, the elements of gamification, and like I mentioned, the, ga the game case study. So module one, which is gamification in education, has the contents that you are right now seeing on the screen. Um, basically, like probably many of you know, gamification is associate, associated with the use of game elements, but in non-game context, okay? So it's a concept that reflects motivation, involvement, reward systems, and collaborative teaching. So through, the, through gamification, we can conclude that pleasure and involvement can be associated with learning in a language and communication compatible with the current reality. So um, this, as you can see, are the contents of this specific module. There are competences, skills, and knowledge related to achieve the competences, assessment methods, et cetera, the, the general concepts of gamification. Module two, which is the learning library platform, explores the different available platforms for, for digital game creation and the available resources, such as quizzes, missions, uh, challenges, uh, stories that can be integrated into a game, so different elements. Um, so as you can see also on the screen, you have the contents of this specific module. If you want to um, explore more into this training course. Okay, module three is the structure of the learning game. So basically this module explains what are the steps, let's say step by step, step by step and by phases that you need to follow in order to structure a learning game. Um, this module also presents the possible different kinds of games because there can be different ones. So for example, simulations, role play, or physical and virtual, and also some principles of video games. Our fourth module is the elements of gamification. And this one is, um, extends, let's say, a little bit more the first concept of gamification, because here there are some um, kind of elements, let's say, already uh, shown to you. So like a specific uh, quizzes or the batches and rewards um, methods, different ones that you can find. So it's uh, a presentation of the different elements that you can integrate in the gamification um, methodology. And finally, which is coming soon because it's not ready yet, we are working on the case study of the game, which will be a presentation of how the game we have created works. So it will show you um, specifically what kind of a structure we have followed, what kind of elements of gamification we have included. So you will have a full vision of everything that's been um, trained in the previous modules. So very soon it will be ready in the website along with the other modules, which are not ready yet. Uh, they are not on the website yet, but they will be very soon. Um, like I say here, the training course will be available on the project website. And also we will try to promote it through the social media. So in case you, you, you want to follow us like uh, Constantina showed you earlier, uh, you will be, um, you'll know when when everything is updated. And also, um, further on, we have another webinar. So we are hoping to, to by that time, have everything up, uh, updated and uploaded on the website. So we also invite you to join us in a future, in a future time. So if you have any questions, you can contact actually any of us who is, who is here today. And um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Sayla.
for the amazing presentation that you prepared for us and I hope it was really useful for everyone here. If you have any questions, we'll make sure to include them all in the end uh, of the webinar. So you can write them and we can read them afterwards, but I have already answered one regarding the certificates. Uh, we will prepare and send you certificates after the completion of the webinar. So I think we can move on with the next part of the webinar uh, with the teacher's perspective on the relevance in the digital climate heritage game. And maybe Milena would like to go first and present her part. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, just a quick confirmation, please, that you can see my screen. Perfectly, yes. Okay, so welcome to our webinar on behalf of the Bulgarian partner. We are Professor Ivana Postul, private high school from Bulgaria located in Sofia. We're really happy to be a partner in this project. Uh, and now, briefly, I will present to you how the project evolves and how it will be implemented once uh, finished at the end uh, in our school. So to begin with a little bit of overview, I will tell you about us and our experience so far in the context that we developed the project and it com components and the training course in particular. Uh, in general, what we do is we apply, and I would say successfully in the past few years, innovative approaches, methods, uh, and techniques in uh, the learning and studying process. And uh, one of them is innovative subjects for personal development and the transversal skills, including the soft skills. Another part of our work and experience is implementation of uh, the so now more widely developed and implemented across schools and education STEM approach, which we upgraded and uh, edit also arts and entrepreneurship, so STEMI. In this context, the project is applied in some of the subjects uh, related uh, to all of the elements, science, technology, engineering, arts, math, and entrepreneurship in the context of uh, sustainability. In all these processes, across all our subjects and the, the learning process, we apply game-based and project-based learning as well in our different subjects, uh, where again uh, related to development of transversal skills and more precisely team skills and leadership skills of students, we put them to work in teams particularly to develop the, uh, the game-based learning. And this particular project, we also elaborate on the sustainable development uh, topics that are included in um, the subject in our school at the secondary level. We also do, as you already saw also in the beginning, uh, we make and prepare field trips uh, in order to explore some areas and more precisely the cultural heritage, which was also part of preparing the materials and elaboration of the intellectual outputs as they were presented earlier, meaning preparation of videos, questions, and application of different tools. Some kind of advice or tips for our colleagues teach uh, and uh, management of schools. The key success factors, in our opinion, again, based on the experience from this project and from our work in general, is first to have the commitment of the colleagues and the team at the school. We can start with a small team who will be developing and implementing slowly the process of gamification in the education in the same way as the topic of sustainability. Then we need, of course, to provide some training and guidelines, which I hope will be done successfully from our side by the development with this training course that was just presented to all of you, which will give you um, further details on how to do, how to develop the game yourself, how to implement it, practical tools, advice, and other information and resources that you can easily apply in your courses. And last but not least, climate change and cultural heritage is a topic that, in my in our opinion as a team, is not well explored yet. 
uh, and there is much space for growth and development. It's very interesting and our experience with the students who work so far with us on the preparation of the different elements is they're really excited and they find it interesting. In terms of creating the learning game, we start the process by starting a project, which is innovation. Every innovation starts as a small project first. The most important thing is the team. When we form the team, we need to keep in mind that we need the diverse background of people and diverse functions of the people. Uh, so before even the design, we need the experts uh, from the curriculum perspective, uh, from the practical perspective, and we approach it exactly as we approach the development of the lesson plan that we develop. Then the collaboration of these teams. First, the collaboration within the team and then outside of the team, as you can see here in the network. Uh, because we need to include, again, the curriculum executives, the experts, and parents, students, teachers. Creating the learning game step by step. First of all, of course, for all of us, the question is how it fits to the overall curriculum, how it fits to the uh, learning plans that we already have in our schools, in our education systems. So we need to align the game in the process. Uh, by defining the educational requirements. Then we move on with some general design, an idea of what the goal is, uh, what is the genre of the game, how it will look like. And of course, here is the place where we need the IT experts and specialists who could be external experts or part of our teams and part of our teachers to help actually programming the game. And the implementation, which is the hardest part, the most difficult is after having the plan in place, after having the requirements to align all this, put together and involve all parties from the school, um, from uh, the, the classes, uh, the structure of the classes and how exactly we execute the already developed plan. Another important point here is, of course, it is a game. It should be fun, but we also, we should do some assessment because we're still at sc in school and we teach students who need to um, show their best performance. So we need to think and plan accordingly the ways to assess the knowledge and skills. And last but not least, we need to adjust this game for future use. Another point here is uh, sharing the knowledge and exchanging experience with our colleagues for within, first within our schools and our teams, and then outside of our schools so that we can disseminate the results and broaden the impact of what we've done. And briefly, this was it from my side, uh, as my colleagues already said from the team for any questions and any further details and information on the project and how it evolves, you can visit our website, particularly to contact us. Uh, it's my email address that you can use. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Milen. I think it's really interesting to see how educators are approaching this whole project and its objectives and its uh, outputs. And that's why I want to continue with Susanna. So she can also present her experience and how her school has approached this whole project. Okay. Hello. Hello, everybody. I will share now my presentation. I think. Uh, you can see it. Now? Yes? Yes, Susanna, we can. Thank you. Okay, okay. So, hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here representing the IEA, which means Agrupamento de Escolas de Alcanena, Alcanena School Cluster. Uh, Alcanena is a small town in central Portugal, but with huge um, environmental problems. 
um, uh, in particular, the ones related with the local industry, which is the tanning industry. Uh, and for this reason, our students begin uh, from an early age to be alerted to the importance of um, uh, preserving the environment. Uh, and therefore, when we uh, became aware of this project, this climate heritage pro project, it made perfect sense for us uh, to participate in it. So first, because it was intended to raise awareness among students that climate uh, changes are destroying um, uh, this destroying their cultural heritage, which is something that most of them don't uh, realize. Um, they uh, are worried, students are worried, uh, really, uh, we can see that about the sea level changings, about the global warming, but they don't, don't seem to value uh, the, the impact of the climate change in their local heritage. So they are worried about the big picture, about the big thing, but they don't realize that it is reaching all of us right now. It's outside our, our door. So we can see this impact around our small town here in, in Alcanena. So um, the participation in this project was important to make our, our students to recognize it. So it's a, a, a big, small big step <laughs> so the second aspect that uh, of this project which um, has um, been motivating and engaging our students and our teachers um, at uh, uh, the Alcanena uh, cluster of school is the uses of uh, is the fact that this project uses an approach that combines the, this envi uh, environmental concern with the use of new technologies and new teaching teaching strategies, namely gamification. So, um, because gamification is something that we use um, often in our school and in our cluster. Uh, of schools. So um, uh, our, our teachers that uh, are present here can confirm that we use it a lot. We use it uh, to motivate students when we are uh, beginning a new content, for instance. We, you, we use it as an assessment tool. Uh, so these benefits of using gamification, um, I agree with them totally for my personal experience. And um, so the gamification improves the assimilation of knowledge clearly because the students retain the contents for a, a longer period of time. It makes the learning process more enjoyable because they are learning, but also they are um, in, enjoying, they, they are playing, so it's more fun. It develops autonomy because they can go from a level to another um, by themselves if they want. They, they can do collaborative work also, which is something that we promote a lot in our school. Um, in, in our school cluster. So it increased concentration because um, uh, unlikely the, the, the general idea that gamification uh, leads to a, a lack of concentration in students. No, by the contrary, it, increase, it increases uh, concentration because they must be focused in what they are do, doing to, to go to, to the next level if they want to go until the end of the game, uh, um, if they want to go further in the game. So it improves student results through immediate feedback and it encourages persistence. And persistence and perseverance are skills that nowadays we must um, make we must make grow in our in our students. It's something that our students need to have to to go ahead in in our society today in nowadays. So now I will briefly present um, some uh, of um, the places that our students uh, chosen. 
uh, to study in this uh, within the scope of this project and from the point of view of the impact of the climate change uh, uh, on this on these locations um, they're all around our uh, nearby our uh, our small town the first location um, is this one that you can see here um, this is a field trip that uh, in this photograph on the right it's a field trip uh, that we have made to the place it's called Jurassic Beach uh, it is located in Cabeça da Ladeira, São Bento and uh, those are students from the 12th grade um, this site is an amazing place it is a, mag a magical place. Uh, when we went there, when we arrived there, it, we, we were fascinated, the students and the teachers that were uh, also there, we were fascinated. We didn't know, uh, knew about the existence of this place. Incredibly, it's incredible how we didn't know about it because it is one of the most important paleologic, paleo paleontological finds, finds ever found in Portugal and even in Europe because of the quality of the, uh, the paleontological registers that are craved on the rocks, uh, on the ground. So as you can see on the left, there are uh, starfishes, um, there are skin uh, sea urchins, um, and they are so well preserved that because th this was a quarry, so they were covered with stone. And then when the stone was removed, they, they are now exposed to the elements. So our students were very worried. And mo uh, some of them, um, they were uh, saying, oh, teacher, this one of these days, uh, one of these days, in 10 years, in 20 years, this may not be here any, anymore because of the acid rains. And so they were worried about it. So this was one of the places that we visited and uh, that um, they, they made uh, questions about it for the game. So what was done, what is being done? Uh, students in the 12th grade made the recognition, the recognition of fossil records with the help of university researchers. Uh, they attend two online webinars with experts from different study areas, and they also created <clears throat> the elements for the game, videos, quizzes, questions, crosswords. So <clears throat> as you can see here, we had, of course, the help of the university researchers to understand um, better what was there craved on the rock, what kind of animals and uh, uh, what kind of fossils. <clears throat> so in the end, the students of the 12th grade develop applications in the IT class, namely QR codes to be used by visitors to this Jurassic Beach thus allowing the dissemination of information about the, the paleonto paleontological records and valuing this cultural heritage. The 12th grade class is still investigating this year the possible application of a biopolymer that uh, made from the fa uh, fats um, obtained from tanneries, our local industry, protect these paleontological records from the impact of climate and climate changes. So they are worried, not only they are, they are worried with the, the site, with the locals that they visited, and, but they tried to do something about it. It's our quality. Uh, in our school, we have this um, type of, of um, 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 idea that we, we must not only alert, make, make them to be alerted for the problems, but they must, must also be active about it. So we, we try to get help from anyone we can, the, the experts, the experts, the university researchers, the 
some centers of researching are also uh, particular centers centers of research of researching are also helping us in some in some projects and um, they tried to do something about it and also they tried to create the elements for the game and they play it after it so it was very fun um, the second uh, location, it was the Polch of Miraminde, which is considered, considered a Ramsar zone. That is a protected wetland due to its importance for uh, environmental conservation. It is located five kilometers from our school cluster. And the Jurassic Beach is located about uh, 10, uh, 12 kilometers from our school. Um, um, as you can see also here, the, the uh, environment, the natural environment is very beautiful. Um, it's a, also a magical place. Um, it is located also in a limestone area where the er erosion of the rock created, a, created an underground hydrological system connected to the three sources of the three um, the sources of three local rivers during the rainy season when the entry of water into the system is greater the water rises and floods the depression forming a temporary pond not a temporary pond it's more like a big lake so with the decrease in precipitation the water empties through the same places that causes the flood um, and in summer um, in summer, we can see all this place is much more dry than you can see in these pictures, because these pictures were taken in uh, the autumn or in winter. OK, so um, there was uh, um, in the, on the left, uh, we, we can see um, um, university uh, teacher that is uh, explaining to our students what is important and the characteristics of the geological characteristics of the place, but also the biodiversity of this place. And on the right, they are collecting some samples um, of what, green wart frogs, the small frogs that are typical from this place, as, it, as I will explain uh, right now. Um, what has been done and what are the results obtained? from the study of this place. Um, we studied it on, uh, um, uh, uh, on the effects of the climate change at the hydrological level in the Polch, mainly influ influenced, influenced by the rainfall in the area. This study was carried out based on the analysis of sat satellite photos using the platform Sentinel playground. So, we use te technology also here, um, but they went further. So the, then the class went on to study the biodiversity present in the Polish and the impacts that it may have suffered over the years with the effects of climate change through the study of uh, the temporary ponds existing in the area. The, the, they focused, uh, the, or this study uh, focused mainly on population counts of two endemic species of this region, which are the, the fairy shrimp and the green wart frog, a really uh, small green frog that is typical uh, from uh, this place. So it was concluded that effectively a decrease was visible over the last eight years in the level of water in the pulch, thus concluding that uh, there is already uh, statistically some decrease in the number of individuals of the, spe the species under study, especially in the case of the green wart frog. So our students were very worried about it. Um, the third location. I'm yeah. so sorry, I have to interrupt you and tell you that please can you finish with your presentation so we can move on yeah, because yeah. we're running out of time. I'm so sorry. Yeah. This one Perfect. is the last one. I do Thank speak. You. Thank you. <laughs> the third location, the water spring of Olhos d'Agua. 
Alveolar River is one of the most important of our country. It's very nearby Alcanena, about uh, four kilometers. So it's very beautiful, as you can see also in the pictures. It's a uh, river um, beach and a, a trendy beach uh, uh, nowadays. Uh, over the past uh, year, 10 uh, great uh, students have conducted a, st a study on the climate impact on the flow of uh, this spring. They also participated in cleaning the river and its banks and identifying the type of garbage collected, collected evaluating the presence of microplastics in the water and the banks of the river, having inserted this data, the data that they got uh, from this study, into an international project platform, Go Europe Plastic Pirates. Um, so it's an international project that we have also participated. Uh, and the, they made also questions for the, the game, the climate heritage game, based on this study also. So it, it is, that's it. And I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have Thank any. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Susanna I'm and Elena. I'm here. Uh, it was really nice uh, learning more about your experiences. And I really hope it was also fruitful for our participants. And then I would like to continue with Victor so he can present uh, the game and share some information about it. Hello, everybody. My name is Victor and I come from Predi Consulting, where among other things, we focus on creating digital tools, such as uh, platforms, 2D games or video games for educational purposes. Before uh, showing you a bit the platform, I would like to invite you to use, uh, there is a button there, uh, uh, raising hand, I think. Um, no, uh, the question button to use it in the next uh, few seconds and uh, to try together in this exercise, which I show you now, to try together to find the proper words. So please just let's see who is the quickest one for the first one. Uh, let's try to find the proper words from the ones on the right. The current climate change is significant and is occurring at the and we will need to find together the proper word. So please type it there. There is a there is a Q and A area where you can type. Uh, where we have the previous questions as well. You can uh, also type it in the chat. I can see it and uh, or in the chat. Uh, yes. I'm not sure if they are. Uh, if they can type in chat, if they are allowed. I have tested. So yes, yes, if they are allowed. more affected, we have uh, more affected. Somebody else, a different opinion. So Daciana is saying uh, more affected. OK. I will take more affected and place here. Let's see the next one. Uh, you can read the text, and then there have been times of. I will just take what you what you type. Uh, we have chat as. Uh, oh, it's uh, with a Q and A. So the next one. Which one would you choose? Between more inevitable producing faster. The ball is on your side, just waiting for you to choose one. I'm saying that someone has typed producing. Uh, producing, producing, okay. Uh, let's see the next one. Of course, you have to read the text, carefully read the text in order uh, to come with the, with the right answer. What is happening is that it is quite clear that we are now the ones who, to a large extent, are was the next one. It's a word and then this changes. So you are saying faster, okay? And let's take the last two. I will just take and place them here. And then we check. So there is a button check. So as you can see, one was uh, the right one. 
rather uh, we have to come back with a retry button and we can uh, go again to this uh, small part of the platform game and try to find uh, the proper answers. I prefer to start with uh, this uh, small example uh, to show you a bit of, uh, of the platform. Um, but I will uh, also explain uh, how uh, uh, we decided on some elements there. First of all, we um, talked a lot and tried to find the balance between uh, the challenges, uh, the complexity of a game, but also the technical possibilities of the uh, schools, partners, and the uh, uh, competencies, which we didn't want to be very technical, very high. Um, so generally teacher, teachers with, uh, with uh, let's say, average uh, digital abilities to um, be able to work uh, on um, and to propose a small uh, e-game. Uh, therefore, we went through some ideas um, there. For example, uh, RPG Maker or Unity or Unreal for video games or uh, App Game Kit. But we realized that there are, of course, um, great uh, pieces of software. But in order to use them, the learning curve will be quite on a, on, on a long uh, period um, um, to be planned for the teachers, for the people uh, willing to uh, use the game. So um, we saw other um, examples from our um, projects and we realized that it's better to come with uh, something which is free. And that's why we have uh, selected this Moodle e-learning platform where you can come with small e-games and um, this can be uh, taken as separate lessons, lessons and together uh, to build um, a story with a more complex game and with some missions. As already explained by uh, our uh, colleagues, missions can be uh, different and focused on uh, various countries or uh, um, places. So there is a challenge and um, these challenges are built using uh, short videos, articles, photos, uh, eventually some introductory uh, text. And they are um, in the questions grouped in some sets. And I will show you, apart from the questions, uh, from the quizzes, we can use crossword, critters, hangman, uh, find the words. For example, you have tested now, find the word uh, piece uh, of the game. And there are uh, a number of missions. And apart from, uh, from these missions and questions, we, have, um, we will have a best system in place and the completion uh, progress bar and ranking. So some uh, gamification elements introduced there on the platform. For instance, there is a class, you can have a class and they can all go together on their mobile phones and you can uh, have a competition among them uh, to see uh, the top five, for, for example. And they have, uh, we can have some coin system and treasure hunt. This is the levels system. And um, to go back on the platform, um, once it's ready in the following weeks uh, until next year, then there are these missions and here there are these exercises they are described and uh, you will have uh, the possibility to let people uh, work with, the, with these uh, quizzes. For example, there is a, the first one traveling through time, a challenge. So we have uh, <clears throat> some questions regarding uh, ancient uh, Greece with uh, uh, Parthenon, Acropolis, 
they can answer the question and they will get the points which will be seen here. For the testing uh, time, uh, Constantina got the highest number of points, as you can see, uh, followed by Susanna, Nerea, Joanna, uh, colleagues from other organizations. That's in a few words. Um, these are in the words, the plans for uh, for uh, this uh, 